Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Spin Cycle Podcast. The podcast talking to the uh, groups, the personalities, and the brands that make London and the UK an incredible place to be a cyclist. Uh, just going to be NJ and I this week. It's going to be a little update from us. Got a few things to go through, but um, yeah, NJ, good to have just the two of us. How's uh, how's things been with you? All good. All good. Uh... It feels like the weather is warming up, but I'm sure we're we're due for at least two more sub minus win, winter chills. There's always those, those little winter chills coming in February and March, and then there's one in the start of April, and then by the end of April, it's like 20 degrees, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit weird at the moment. Um, but yeah, like, this is the second one we've done in yeah. since we started the podcast, right? So maybe, just first of all, thanks to everybody for listening to the podcast we said it lots of times but uh it was a bit weird just starting this and then sorry it was not weird starting it it was weird when people started listening and started sending us whatsapp messages saying oh i listened to your podcast and it and it slightly became uh, a bit ahead of ourselves commenting but, um, on everything that we've said yeah yeah as, yeah, yeah as well that thank you very much thanks to everyone for uh, that. we, we also the... slightly slightly painted ourselves into a corner with the white bib short chat potentially haven't we we <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah i've had many comments on from especially from the first episode when we were talking about our best favorite cyclists uh and my mate connor message straight away and was like where's nairo man <laughs> nairo Nairo's back at movies to hide your wives. Yeah, he uh, he let he let the break go. He let he let I think he let what Bernal and Higita go in the Colombian nationals for some reason, uh, and they just <laughs> went up the road, dropped him. But uh, how, how are you, Cam? Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm back on a bike. Went out yesterday, which was the 31st of January, my wife's birthday. Happy birthday uh mixed result i would call it a mixed result it was incredibly windy i set a new threshold heart rate of 178 beats which i'm 31 maybe it wasn't a good decision max rate was like 194 to be honest with you i don't know if it was that i got too excited i just thought i was better than i was i haven't really touched a bike for I rode a little bit in France, but I haven't actually touched a bike since properly since late October. So and you told me this was a zone two ride as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so what happened was, yeah. Yeah. Was getting that? natural. What, yeah. So, so, all right. So what happened was, uh, I initially thought I'll smash this. I'll see how we go. It was like, uh, between 12 and, uh, two, my daughter started going to nursery on a Wednesday. Hashtag life update. And I thought I can just jump out quickly. And I live in Ripley, right? So I got to probably Effingham Junction, where the Queen stage is. And I realized that I didn't have any legs. <laughs> and then I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll turn this into a zone two, right? So I put my wahoo on two watts per kilo because i thought that's zone two roughly away about 75 kilos 150 watts and yeah i i, I died a little inside so and i I'll, and, and also yeah the, the bidon thing <laughs> i think you can tell what uh how how do you set up your bike bidon wise for a ride cam right okay so <laughs> Generally speaking, I always take two, okay? Now, for yesterday's ride, I didn't think I needed two water bottles. So I had an empty one on my bike and I had a full one. And before I left the house, obviously I filled up one and thought that will look good for the snaps on IG, Instagram, for those who don't know. And then what happened was I left the house, got to the bottom of Box Hill, dries a raisin, picked up the water bottle, realized I actually left the water bottle full of water on the kitchen counter. So I had my aesthetically pleasing single water bottle with me. The bit I didn't tell you as well, I had a gel with me and it's one of these power bar 
gels from Decathlon. Oh, wow. The Cola one. I'm not going to share it. nutritional information on this, but I believe it has more caffeine content than a can of Red Bull. So. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get into Red Bull story in a minute, but keep going. And then I got to the top of Box Hill. I was also trying to be cool because I realized I'd blown. I had like a granola bar and like this hydro gel caffeine content. I'd realized I'd blown. So I, uh, I got my phone out of my hand and started like looking for music to like pretend it was like a just casual ride up so and i passed someone oh <laughs> god <laughs> with my phone out afternoon not far now you know but little did he know yeah. my, my wahoo was saying 170 beats a minute and please i was stop. trying to play it <laughs> yeah so yeah please stop like got to the top of the box paid three pound fifty for a bottle of water from that fucking national kiosk. Trust cafe mm. yeah, kiosk it's expensive in there and uh, yeah, came home very dehydrated. In fact, I don't even think I drank the water that was in that. I think I came home with a full bid on. Oh dear. And it was very windy. I just want to say, but the problem with the wind thing is that I've got a power meter and power meters don't lie. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just very unfit at the moment. I thought I was fitter. Untrained. Yeah, untrained. So maybe that's my that's my goal for the next three months. Three. So it's going to be a lot of, lot of zone two on the turbo. Although I'll be honest with you, I, I'm I'm really unsure about how to get my bike uh, back on the cassette. <laughs> so I panic every time I take the rear wheel off because I never know properly how to flip the derailleur around the cassette. You know, you have to like pull it slightly and then it whips around. So it oh, takes what? me putting, like a good putting your bike yeah. on the takes me 15 minutes. The way I do it is I just pull back. What all you need to do is like pull the hanger. Well, I don't know if this is what you're meant to do, but I pulled the derailleur. So that's what so you're supposed you to do. Should, but I you take, panic yeah, every time. Maybe you just need a shit trainer bike. Or you buy the you know you convince the wifey that getting one of those like what bikes or wahoo bikes or garmin bikes is good for the household and good for you and because you're going to be a fitter you so you're going to be around longer yeah nice nice try mate <laughs> speaking of trying to convince trying to speaking of trying to convince yourself about something why don't you tell everybody about the latest in nj needs a new bike graphic on screen currently um, <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say I need a new bike. I would just say when you love your bike as much as I do and you're nearly into your ninth year with it, things are going to wear out. Wear what and tear, today? I think they call it. What, what happened, happened today? today? Well, for me to tell you what happened today, we have to go back. We have to go back to <laughs> last week <laughs> where, you know, every mechanic, everyone with a mechanic group set may have done this where you – Somehow, I was putting my bike on the trainer, funnily enough, mm. uh, and I think I've, I've accidentally like clicked something in it or pulled something <laughs> when I was putting it on that uh, the right shifter jammed with the, the cable in it, <laughs> which is, a, according to you know Pat and Johnny, easy fix. You just got to poke it out, but I didn't have the Shimano poke stick, so right, I took okay. it to the bike shop, and, and I was like, I haven't had it serviced in a while, so I got it serviced. Okay. Um, so I got new cables, got mm. new jockey wheels because I've worn them that much from all the riding I've been doing. Uh, Very good, nice plug. But <laughs> the uh, the unfortunate thing is that I think there's a def there was like a defect with the jockey wheels because they got sent like in a when you get the jockey wheels they get sent in a bag and they're like zip locked as well like zip tied together. But okay. they came at because on. I think I had a pretty old mech on it. The jockey wheels were the same size. Okay. Uh, but on newer ones, one jockey wheel's bigger than the other. Um, so Is that a thing? We're playing... I don't know. Look at... look, look at, What's I'm telling this story? Look at your bike behind you. See if the Shimano bits are... Uh, and basically, they weren't sure if there's meant to be like grease in the jockey wheel or not. Um, 
but I think it's there's not meant to be it. But I'll be honest, mine looks the same though, size. I'll be honest, mine looks the same yeah. size. Did you get them from Wish.com? Yeah. No, no. But anyway, the jockey wheels were making a pretty horrible squeaking noise. Um, very unbearable. And then it went away, obviously, when you go towards the bike shop, and then it comes back. Um, so I, oh, yeah. after that, I had to take it back in, and they're like, you know what? Let's just, buy, let's just fit a new rear mech. So today, <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the bike off to get the rear mech uh, fitted, which was meant to be like, they're like, it should only take like 30 minutes, if that. Yeah, and nice. And then they're like, we've, we'll put on like the new cassettes so you can go for it. Because at the moment I've got, I've been limited to 11.28 and now I've got 11.30 on. So I've got gears like a normal person at the back. Um, but they thought they'd do the nice thing of, oh, we don't really ever do this for like customers, but because I'm such a loyal customer, so support your local bike shop, everyone. We'll, um, re- we'll like, you know, replace the bear. We'll do, we'll, you know, we'll clean up the bearings. Make sure, give it a little check. Undid it, and then, then all this metal came out. <laughs> so, but, like, <laughs> but they were like, we weren't expecting this because your hub sounds perfectly fine. And I was like, I wasn't expecting it either. Um, so right. I spent like two hours uh, replacing Building a new bearing. Cause of, like, yeah, because usually they just will, would straight up replace the hub because they don't like doing this stuff. But they did it for me. And they didn't even charge me the, the manual labor for it. So I only bought the parts, the new parts for it. So there it is. Support your local bike shop. Relationship management. Building. Is there ever going to become a point where your bike ends up like Trigger's Brew? Because... Probably. But Christine has asked me this question many times. And I say, the bike is the frame. Everything else is replaceable. The bike and the fork are your is the bike because like you can get different wheels and tires and cranks lengths and seats and saddles and okay I'm gonna ask a question that I've asked in it's gonna try and many of our other po- I'm gonna ask you for many of our other podcasts have asked the same question is it true that they no longer make parts for your bike frame uh yes that is true. Vintage, I think they call it. But it's like an inner cabling thing. I don't know what it is. But the cables still work. You can still use my bike. It might squeak and there's a bit of friction. But we will run this into the ground, Cam. So, okay. Are you potentially ever going to change the bike? Or are you going to... very much like one day. One day I'll get a new bike. Hmm. Anything in anything of interest? Um, well, I did. Well, I did. I think we've gone over this before. I did go like three prong attack. The race bike. We went over this last. The, road, the, the racy road bike, the sort of gravelly bike, and then like a gravelly or mountain bike, then like a nice commuter. But mm. with what I got, I already got the road bike, so I'll just run the. I run the felt until it like literally like doesn't work no more and then i'll like have to have to put the business case forward to my my my, my, you know my bank account of like you should really buy a new bike now (laughs) as in like the gravel bike any of the the spreadsheet monkeys i believe you're gonna have to put that to uh the credit committee and you'll see whether they get (laughs) something or not uh exactly uh but i think if i was to get a new bike it'd be like maybe some sort of like gravelly kind of endurancey thing just to commute on because uh, it's you know potholes and all that stuff i won't care put bag put some like panniers on it or get like a racing fin put my laptop in it and then just like comfortably rag it around london <laughs> maybe a steel right. frame i think it, you know frame material i don't mm. know I do love my carbon, but maybe I'll go aluminium. I don't know. As in most bikes, I think all I can afford is aluminium. All of these there. I feel like all bikes are so expensive now that maybe metal is coming back. Go to titanium, maybe. Get a curve, like Jordan was saying. Oh, yeah, that episode doesn't come out yet, has it? (laughs) (laughs) 
Everybody, ex- well, yeah, know. we'll we'll announce we'll announce that one in about two weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, have you ever have you ever been on the service course website? This this no. this this popped up. This popped up on a, one of my in one of my groups about the the service course. Um, okay. Have you seen the bikes that they have on there? I'll get them out. What bike? What bike brands do you think the service course have to rent? Uh, I'm going to go. I'm assuming it's quite niche because otherwise we wouldn't be having yeah. a conversation. I'm going to go for like it. And also, is it uh, have they got like titanium bikes? Some quite. Uh, they got. Uh, here we go. I'm on the website. Girona road oh, bikes. Here we go. Okay. You ready for them? Argonaut. Bella. Okay. Who? Curve. Okay, Bella. I know Curve. We've got Curve. We've got the MV Melee. Endurance uh, bike. The Eisen. I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I know an Eisen. Yeah. My, friend, my, friend's, my friend's got an Eisen. Custom one. They're very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, a mosaic. I have heard of mosaic. Uh, repeat, 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 repeat. It's R E P E T E. Repeat. Is that how you say it? Like re- repeat. But I don't know if it's like um, one's. <laughs> this one's called. <laughs> There's one called sc- sc- scarab, but all I can think in my mind is scab. <laughs> Are you sure it's not scarab? Is in a scarab beetle. As in S R, no S C A R A B. My, Scarab. You can, my dyslexia is coming out in a big way right now of me reading live to it. Yeah, everyone. I was uh, thinking maybe we, clip, maybe we clip this, and it's in it. NJ reads NJ reads niche brands from the service course. Oh yeah, uh, and then Speed Vegan. The Speed Vegan. Speed Vegan. Yeah. So, but. Maybe I'll go for one of these bikes. Maybe I go to Girona. Maybe this is it, Cam. I go to Girona. Each day I rent a different bike to get a feel for. And then you come home to the UK and ride the felt. I, I exactly. I uh, actually went to a physio appointment this week. Um, <laughs> just the you know whilst we're, whilst we're cooking here, uh, and then my physio. Yeah. <laughs> my physio uh, also into cycling and he asked me what bike I had and I said felt and he was like oh you've chosen a good one there he was very impressed the connoisseur's choice is a felt exactly good build <laughs> we're, we're nearly at nine years with Come that in mind <laughs> this heads for a break Give it, we need the cafe scoops <laughs> <laughs> Wait, welcome back, everyone. Um, so, in our next section that we've just made up, ad lib on the spot, cafe scoops. They may not have even been in a cafe, but we're just here for juicy content. So, Cam, map. Mm. I forgot map what they're called. Crusade. <laughs> the crusade. Right. I was like, Crusade? <laughs> I've got so, conspiracy theory. The... I need to get this off my chest. Okay, I've sent you the images, but we're going to go yeah. through it now. Map and Le Creuset have the same color palette. Okay, and I'm not saying that the two companies are working together, but what I am saying is, if you also like middle class earthenware and performance cycling apparel from Australia, well, you're lucky because you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. Dark green, yellow, the orange, the purple, all complementary colours between Map and Le Creuset. I'm sure we can get it on screen, but all I'm going to say is that there's a yellow one, like a Marseille yellow. It's a very dark green. There's this. In fact, I have one here. This is an off-white colour. I was wearing this yesterday. It's like a light purple. A slightly washed out green. 
The washed out green. There is called. There's one called bamboo green. Correct. Or there's one called no, it's more blue. As in, when you go in John Lewis, they've got them all on the wall, which probably shows you where I I've been recently. <laughs> to, to, to know that sea salt's kind of green. Is it like that? Yes. There's also a really dark green, like a forest green color. I have that one. Oh, the the bamboo. That's bamboo green. Yeah. There is there's something afoot here, and I believe there is a conspiracy between Le Creuset and Map. NJ, how about you? Do you have any cafe scoops? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, I got a couple. Uh, I was in Fortitude this week. Um, mm. There's a rumor going around that they they shrink them well. It's not really a rumor. It's just there's more of a conspiracy. Um, it's hard to know if it's true or not, but it probably is due to, I guess, volume of people there in summer. But we think that they, the the baked goods are a little smaller around the summertime compared to the winter. But we're at max bunnage right now, being in the winter. Um, okay. And there wasn't really many people there on Tuesday, whilst it was you know tropical five degrees. Mm. But the buns were. The buns were burning. Uh, the other, the other, the other chat of the the cafe today was that uh, a man on a man a man on the ground in Melbourne, mm. Tom Swallow, uh, has been been slamming slamming the summer sessions in Australia. Okay. So if you think uh, Regents mm-hmm. six a.m. There's a lot of chain gangs Fine. in Australia. Apparently, that happens five days a week at five a.m. and <laughs> you'll be going <laughs> going down like maybe pretty main roads, maybe even bypasses kind of thing because Australian roads are quite big um, in a peloton of like sixty people. <laughs> no way. I think he he did. I think he did what an hour's ride or something like that the other day, and they averaged forty two k an hour. For like the first fifteen minutes or something, or thirty minutes, something, something I've seen, like for like I guess amateur cycling. But apparently, all, and he was cycling around the the Grand Prix circuit the other day. Mm. But apparently, not many people ride on it. But he said he, I think Regents has conditioned him to do laps. <laughs> so, a question about fortitude. Yeah. Are we? Do you think we are in the first case of cycling shrinkflation, which is maybe they sell more buns? In the summer, so now they're smaller. Yeah, I, I assumed if I was owning a business, I would also make smaller buns in summer if everyone was there. And it's also <laughs> easy to get more. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna. I'm not gonna diss them for that. It's like it's, we'd, they had to run. A, they run a seven day business, like seven days a week mm. business, um, and it makes sense because, like, when you're there in the summer, it is like all of the heaving. Yeah. All of the groups are out. All the people who aren't cycling now will be cycling. Um, not saying they're not cycling. Well, cycling outdoors. They could be cycling indoors, for all I know. I don't know where they are. I don't follow them. Uh, but <laughs> come <laughs> the sun, they'll all be out, and they'll all be at Fortitude because you stand outside. I think it's probably like the biggest non-cycling cafe there is. Although it's not really a cafe. It's just a bakery, isn't it? I think it's just because there's like benches outside. So you have the, the air of like yeah. being outside. But it's probably the worst place to have like your bike <laughs> when you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. as we're thinking of starting Prince and Parve there, you'll understand what I mean because it's kind of like it's just like a, a row of shops. So like you don't want to put your oh, bike really? on a shop front because the sh- yeah, there's like lots of shutters down and it's kind of residential at the same time. Uh, and there's and randomly cars will just drive down this one this really tight street. Um, really, but the buns, yeah, but the buns are amazing. That's, do you know, that maybe that's a decent little segue into Pints of Pave. It is. We, I was going to say that you could, if you want to eat a cinnamon bun the right way, apparently you meant to like grab it from the inside and it like swirls out and it's easier to eat than like eating it big. There you go. Pro tip. It unravels. Oh, like a turkey twizzler. Exactly. It looks like a turkey twizzler. <laughs> Shout out the boys from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Pints and Pave it's on our Strava group now as a placeholder so it's going to be 1st of April April Fool's Day 
starting at Fortitude. Root, TBC. We'll make sure it's on there. But it's going to be probably about 25, 30K, right? It's actually not going to be too... Yeah, nice and short. Maybe like 5 to 10K worth of actual gobbles. The rest of it will be just cycling because it's going to be like a lot of corners I imagine because we have a lot of traffic lights so I, I was to camera I was like we don't want to make this long because it's already going to be long because there's <laughs> going to be so much traffic it's in central we'll go through central London and it's more it's more special of we start at the cafe we end at the pub yeah I think so and so Fortitude Breakfast is in Fortitude Breakfast will be my first time give it a go from what I understand, there could be secret merch there too, secret free stuff. I've been speaking to a f- I've been speaking to uh, a few people about some free things, maybe. So that'll be there. Ooh. And what kind yeah. of people? Business people. I've been, spe- I've been speaking to Patrick about getting some stickers done. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing exciting. Uh. But um, yeah, he's been putting together a few ideas. I've been having a chat with him. And I think that what we might do is, we'll see how it goes, but we might uh, have got a few different ideas about some other kind of merch that we could look into. But yeah, Pints of Pave, super excited. Yeah. And I think we're also going to do more, so slightly more of me and Cam episodes. But then we're mm. also just going to get some of our friends on who we cycle with oh, burp then I'll just say that again <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> speaking and burping uh, what we yeah we'll be getting on some of our mates on as well get their hot takes we'll ask them like the Q&A section see, see what see what absolute flagrant stuff they might come out with <laughs> I also think it would be quite good fun to get special correspondence on just get someone on for 15 minutes and yeah. just intersperse it with something else. So yeah, we'll, we've got a few people in mind, right? And we can yeah. get an idea. So those people already know who they are, but yeah, we'll, um, we'll get all that sorted. Should we, uh, should we head to a break and then we can tell people what we've got next coming on the podcast. Yeah. Sounds great. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, there was a couple things I forgot to mention. On Tuesday, Cam, I had the, the pleasant surprise of seeing Veronica Ewers and Nielsen Paolo's from the e- the EF cycling world as they're doing raffle laps. So that was a, a nice surprise to see. And also during the break, Cam yeah. got a Amazon delivery of a track pump. So if you're on YouTube, you um, Cam... Sh- sh- show, off what, show off this track bump and then for you all the only listeners so basically the pump that it's got from Amazon is half the size of a normal track pump it it's like a Amazon, shrunk it's in the a world track pump. it's literally <laughs> half the fucking size it's going to do your back in wait I can't it says it goes up to 11 bars. And it also said, I don't run tubeless, but it said it, it can do the, the tubeless exploding onto the rim thing, which I think oh. is just a complete fucking lie because, <laughs> like, look at the size of it. It's, it might be small and mighty. It's just not, no way it's that. So what happened was the, um, I don't know how it happened. When we moved house, I don't know if they dropped my old track bump, but the gauge doesn't work. So how I've been pumping up my tyres for the past year is uh, look and feel. So I pump it up to a certain point that I feel is safe enough for me to ride on. So I don't know what pressure I've been riding for about a year. So I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. This one's got lots of good reviews on Amazon. I don't know if it's been reviewed by garden fucking gnomes, because look at the size of it. It's actually half the size. And Does it go up high or is it not? No, this is it. Hmm. Maybe they've never Sorry, used this. This is it. For those of those of you on a visual format, we'll, we'll make sure we put a photo of this. This is it. It's about, <laughs> dude. My it arm's is. longer than it. 
It really is. From elbow oh. to like what your mid hand. Are you going to take it back or are you going to keep it? I don't know, Eric, to be honest with you. I need a pump. And I'm, I'm, I'm going for a ride on Sunday with um, with Jiro and Isha. So, yeah, I need a, a – plus I put new tyres on my bike, so I, I need to pump it up no matter what. I thought it was a good idea. I thought I was thinking ahead, you know, like order it Thursday, oh, last night, come on Friday, ready for Sunday. Alas, I think I've uh, shot myself in the foot there. Yeah. Um, it's one thing you got by a big brand. My dad has a park tool pump, and it's probably like the best track pump I've ever used. I considered – getting a silker pump but then i looked at the Ooh. price of a silker pump no <laughs> and it came straight out of my sigma basket mm. um what can people expect in the next couple of weeks andrew who have we got coming on uh, other than pints of pave on the first of april what's, what's what's in the pipeline for us uh we have benjamin may from the new normal we cool. have donna the iron cool. empress we have uh our first i guess clothing brand with yeah. angry pablo yeah. And then I'll leave the rest for mystery. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so that's the end of that's the end of our first season. I think for the second season, I think we're gonna release them in blocks, right? So it'll be like three guests, then us and our friend or correspondence, and then we'll just run it like that going forward. So Yeah. Although it'll be just named as normal episodes. In our minds it's seasons. Yeah, but exactly. For, I think. For ease. Yeah, for admin. Fucking admin. But <laughs> I guess thank you everybody for listening or watching. Short and tight this time around, but we'll see you all soon and hope you enjoy the episode with Ben next week. Short and tight like Tommy Vokler's shorts. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're done. Play, Ali, play the outro. <laughs> they were short and tight. <laughs> <laughs>